Both teams first will start with New Mexico. Jordan Hunter, Elijah Brown. Ajet is the senior. He's the big man in the middle. Sam Logwood and Joe Firstinger. You're not seeing Tim Williams, their leading scorer. He didn't make the trip. He's in concussion protocol, so the Homewood Flossmore product isn't in his home state to play against the Redbirds tonight. Illinois State's the starting five. Paris Lee, Mikhail McIntosh, DJ Clayton, Deontay Hawkins, and Phil Fain. And the starting lineups are brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Visit localfordstores.com to check out America's best-selling lineup of utility vehicles. Ford, go further. First ever meeting between Illinois State and New Mexico as part of the Missouri Valley Mountain West Challenge. And the Mountain West has had the better of the deal in the recent meetings in this conference challenge. In fact, New Mexico has never lost in this challenge. The Lobos are 4-0. and The Redbirds are 1-3 and all-time in the challenge. And again, the, the Mountain West leads this challenge in the last five years. Three wins, one loss to the Missouri Valley, and one tie. Tom O'Neill, Bob Staffen, Brad Ferry are going to work today's game. Those are the officials. Illinois State comes out in their home whites with red trim, and New Mexico in their red road uniforms with white trim. Redbirds coached by Dan Muller in his fifth season. New Mexico coached by Craig Neal in his fourth season. We'll tell you more about the coaches as we go along here. Nice student crowd, nice energy here in the building tonight, Bob. Great atmosphere. Great atmosphere. And the opening tip is controlled by New Mexico. And that might have been one of the worst tosses, tosses ever. Right? Opening <laughs> ju jump I've ever seen. Yeah, That's Obach Ajet. He's the seven-footer. He's going to get that easy kind of a, a, a jump, and New Mexico's on the board first. Yes. Elijah Brown, you're going to hear that name a lot tonight, particularly since Tim Williams isn't with them. Hawkins' three is missed. High up to get it is Clayton. The Redbirds are going to get a second look at it. Hawkins is the Redbirds' leading scorer. He's been on a roll here early. Spinning and shooting is Mikhail McIntosh. No good, and it's cleared out of there by Joe Firstinger. He's a junior in this starting five. This is Hunter. Now Brown, he's got the first points of the game. Might have had trap there. Yep. First thing they're trying to do a little too much, but yet still staying within the confines of their offense. He was attacking, going to the rim. That's what they will do. They get to the free throw line a lot because of the way they attack. Well, as you mentioned, the number one free throw shooting team in the Mountain West Conference score a lot of their points from the free throw line. Desperately will hamper the Lobos offense tonight, not having Tim Williams. Young man's are leading score at 19 points a game. He knows how to play. Preseason first team, all selection for the Mountain West League. They're going to miss his presence tonight, but next man up in today's mentality, that's the way it's got to be. Injuries and concussion protocols are all part of the game nowadays. Follows on first thing are Mikhail McIntosh to the free throw line. He's the junior from Pickering, Ontario. Each team with a Canadian player playing here tonight. We'll see out here. We'll walk a little bit later, no doubt, for New Mexico. He was one of the top Canadian players in the western part of Canada. McIntosh splits the free throws. Just underway here at Redbird Arena in Normal, Illinois. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris, our Redbird production crew. First thing are down low, and he may have walked again. No, he's going to get a three-point opportunity. Initially, it looked like they might whistle him for a uh, traveling violation, but instead he's going to get an opportunity for a three-point play. Redbird defense cannot give a direct pass up from the top of the key area from Brown to that close to the rim and expect her not to be rewarded. Lobos know what to do when they get it that close. Great pass, good vision by Brown. First thing, or misses the free throw, though. He's off to a nice start. He has not missed a shot from the field this year. He's nine out of nine, Bob, after that field goal make. Is Joe Firstinger. McIntosh. Kyle's still trying to get into a rhythm offensively. Quickly back up the floor, it's Brown. Preseason Mountain West Player of the Year. Outstanding basketball player. Redbirds are going to have their hands full with him tonight. 
and he does a little bit of everything. Obviously, he can score, he penetrates, he leads the team. That's Jordan Hunter, the sophomore. He's from Beaumont, Texas, in the scorebook after that sweet jumper. And it's a 6-1 start for the visiting team. Lobo's in a man-to-man. -man. That's what they like to play. Hawkins, the wow. miss. Fain, the offensive glass. Wow, great crash of the boards right there by Phil Fain. He's averaging five rebounds a game and really making his presence felt on the offensive glass this year for the Redbirds. Athletic player. He's athletic, and there's a lot of young men on the floors today that are, but he uses his athleticism. He crashes the boards. To go get an offensive rebound isn't all that, doesn't require all that much talent. You just got to want to hustle. Four seconds on the clock from the corner of the three is missed by Hunter, and the ball is on the floor, and it's going to be New Mexico that scrums it out. Fresh 30 seconds on the shot clock now. First loose ball like that on the floor, Lobos come up with it. Logwood's first shot of the game is in. He's open for a three and he knocks it down. That's his third three-point make of the year. The Lobos are not a three-point shooting team. They come in only averaging, I believe, just about three and a half attempts. Not makes, attempts for the entire team per game. Nice pass to late net from Paris Lee who set the table for him nicely. Again, movement without the ball. We're seeing DJ Clayton learn how to do that and stay within the confines of the offense. When he moves without the ball, he becomes a real scoring threat. McIntosh picks up his first foul. You're getting a look at Craig Neal in his fourth season. 64 wins, 40 losses. Spent nine years as an assistant coach under Steve Alford at Iowa and at New Mexico. Former NBA player, former NBA assistant coach in Toronto. A lot of experience. Doing a great job at New Mexico. And now a steal. The first of the game for Illinois State's Paris Lee. He leads the Valley in steals, but threw that one away as the Redbirds were a little too quick to move that ball up the floor. Our first time out on the floor. Illinois State trails New Mexico. It's 9-5 here at Redbird Arena. And you're watching Illinois State and New Mexico here on Comcast Sportsnet. Tonight's game at Redbird Arena is brought to you by Country Financial. If it's important to you, we protect it. 15.59 to go here, first quarter. And New Mexico is out to a 9-5 lead over the Illinois State Redbirds. New Mexico is doing a good job of getting the open look, knocking it down from the outside early. Not something they're necessarily noted for, but obviously not something they'll shy away from either. Xavier Adams is checking into the game now for New Mexico for the first time. Here's Logwood. Nice move. Flipped it up off the glass. Can't get it to go. And Fain clears it for Illinois State. New Illinois. Me I'm sorry, Kurt. New Mexico changed defenses here on that coming back after that timeout. They're in a 2-3. Paris Lee with a three. He's picking up where he left off in his last game when he was shooting it from out there. If you're going to play a 2-3 zone, you might want to find out where Paris Lee is at. He has been knocking it out from that downtown area. Brown, step back, jumper. He shot it right over Tony Wills, Illinois State's top defender. Wow. That, that's a big-time shot right there. That's, that's impossible to defend when you do it with two, three hard dribbles and a, and a step back from that distance. Yeah, that's a pro basketball move from the son of a former NBA coach. And now we got a three-point opportunity for Illinois State as D.J. Clayton was fouled, taking it to the rim. That was, that was a great take right there by Clayton. The charge would have more than likely in, in old days would have been called, but he was inside the arc. And the, and the officials have no, I mean, that, they have no choice but to call it then. That was the first thing the official pointed to was down to the art. Great take, though, by Clayton, showing his athleticism and his ability to get to the rim. So Clayton with an opportunity for a three-point play and the junior from Oakland. Can't make the free throw, though. It's a one-point game now. Redbirds applying some pressure, nearly got a steal there. 
Brown again, works baseline, scoops it up, and he's going to get to the free throw line. And that's what he does. He just has a way, has a knack of beating you, getting that half step, and then drawing the foul. He's also strong enough that when he draws the foul, a lot of times he can finish and get the and one. Now, this is a player that was slowed by a hamstring injury in the preseason, really only practiced with the team six times prior to the start of the season, but he's showing no ill effects from any sort of hamstring injury here tonight. He looks terrific. Well, the only ill effects would be the fact that he's, he's shooting right now is a little bit off because of it, and, and he's working his way back into game game shape and getting game legs under him. Last year, he was a 40% three-point shooter. He'll be there real soon if he's not already. And Connor McDougal, sophomore from Tempe, Arizona, the National Junior College All-American, has checked in the game now for New Mexico. Craig Neal will play 10, 11, 12 players for sure. Not worried at all about those minutes. Spread the wealth around. Deontay Hawkins for three. That's missed, and the long rebound comes out to Jalen Harris, who's in the game for the first time. Hawkins pulling the trigger just a little quick on his shot, a little hurried, and give the defense credit for creating that. Brown with a nice slip uh, pass to a cutting Xavier Adams. Good execution right there. Penetration and a, and a drop down. New Mexico has hit five of its first seven shots from the field. Keyshawn Evans in the game now for Illinois State. His three is long and it bounces clear out to Tony Wills. That was so long, nobody could grab it. But it didn't touch the rim, so the shot clock continues. Two on the clock now. McIntosh is going to put up a three and knock it down. That's like a four-pointer. When you get a second chance after they muffed the attempt on a rebound, and you knock down a three, that's a, that's a big bonus. Seven to shoot now for New Mexico. Five on the clock, ball's on the floor. And thrown away. Redbirds did a lot of running at the ball right there to create that, that turnover. Good job, good aggressive approach by, by the defense. Redbirds with an opportunity for their first lead of the game if they get a three ball on this possession. Lee lost it though. And it's a steal, and New Mexico comes away with it. This is Brown. He hangs and fires, and he's going to get a three-point opportunity. That, that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that's his game. That's what he does. He'll go up for a shot and jump into you. You'll see it right here on replay. And, and if you, you get wild with your arms and you're not in good, solid position, you're going to be in foul trouble. 15 points and five rebounds a night. The average is for Elijah Brown. He's off to a terrific start here tonight. He's got a nine-point first seven minutes of this game. Little three-quarter court. Kind of a 2-2-1 look. Just trying to slow you down and then trap once you put it in the corner. And Birch did, turned it over, and then committed a foul. Tony Wills did about everything as wrong as you could on that possession when you get the ball in the corner. And he picks up his second personal, and so he's going to go to the Redbird bench. And D.J. Clayton's going to come back in. And that hurts the Redbirds defensively because that's a matchup that you'd like to put on Brown because of Wills' size. He can match up pretty good with, with Brown. Speaking of which, he takes a rest and goes to the, goes to the bench for a bit. Brown does. This is Kuiper in the game for the first time. His floater rims out, tipped out, long rebound. The Redbirds are going to get it, and they've got some numbers. Lee, open three. That's in. It. That's his second three-point make of the night. Williams did a great job of getting the ball once it was loose, getting it, and getting it down the floor under control, and then finding the open Paris Lee on the left wing. 
Adams is open. His shot is missed. It's the first time tonight that New Mexico has missed back-to-back -back shots. Lee trails the play. His third three-point shot of the night is no good, and Clayton comes down with it. Deontay Hawkins from the other side. Hat three is in. That time, he was his old self, like we've seen in weeks previous. Didn't rush it. The Birds did a great job on a second attempt, swinging the ball and finding him open on the left corner. First Redbird lead of the night. It'll be, I'll be curious to see how the Lobos respond over the course of the next two to three minutes. Oh, Damian what a move. Jefferson missed the three. Hawkins is going to fire up another three. Coach Neal quickly jumps up and says, let's slow this pace down a bit. He's taking the crowd out by slowing it down. We weren't lying at the top of the broadcast when we said this could be a fun game to watch, right? No, no question about it. There's going to be some shot attempts put up. No, that, that's a given. Five on the shot clock here. A running oh shot off the window. Well done for Jalen Harris. Great control that time. Coming in from the left side. Freshman from Wilson, North Carolina. Rippers have a freshman on the floor right now as well. It's Madison Williams. Lee's crossover dribble. He hangs and fires and misses. Williams' presence on the floor is, is because of Wills' foul trouble with two. Hello. Lobos tried to go down low to Connor McNewell, but instead the ball is out of bounds. It's going to go to Illinois State. New Mexico, a one-point lead here. 2019 over Illinois State. 10-0-2 to play here, opening half at Redbird Arena in Normal. Tonight's game in the Missouri Valley Mountain West Challenge is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Ford, go further. New Mexico leads Illinois State 2019. We played about 10 minutes of this very entertaining opening half. First ever meeting between these schools. And it's been good so far. The Lobos come in with a 5-2 and two record. Illinois State at 3-2. and two. two very athletic squads out here tonight. Good size on both of them. Lobos, holy smokes, they go real deep. Clayton's real deep and real, real tall all the way to the end of their bench. No doubt. Clayton's going to be whistled on the foul as it was Jalen Harris who was making the steal. And about the only thing that stopped him from having a layup was Clayton getting him right about the timeline. Lackadaisical pass, just I mean, coming, coming back after a timeout and then to, to throw away your entry pass starting your offense, is, that, that's inexcusable. I know he's a freshman, but you can't do that. McDougal worked his way in and hit the little jump hook. Over that left shoulder, two dribbles. Little baby hook, good looking shot. And he's one of the guys that's gonna be counted on to kind of pick up the slap with Tim Williams. Not even making the trip here to normal in concussion protocol. And McDougal, one of the post players that's gonna to have to really play some minutes tonight and contribute. Williams open for three and that's in for the Illinois State freshman. Dan Muller this week talked about how much trust he has now in Madison Williams and how much he's earned his trust. And Williams getting some serious playing time now off that Redbird bench. Harris is fouled again. This time, he's fouled in the act of shooting. He's going to get three foul shots on this one. Scattered report says they attempt, they average attempting three and a half threes. Now, I don't think that's a three. Because I'm looking at the replay there. Yeah, the official just signaled two. Okay, okay. So they Closing out that hard on them, I question. There's no reason to be in a position of make contact and, and put it in the hands of the official. They, they're not a, they're not going to shoot from downtown very often. Like I said, they only average three and a half attempts. So a couple of the starters return to the game now. Deontay Hawkins for Illinois State. Joe Firstinger for New Mexico. Oh, 
All those big bodies out there and the shortest guy on the floor comes down with a rebound. <laughs> and this time McIntosh's pass is picked off. Harris again attacks from the left and it was rejected by Phil Fain. And a blocking call against New Mexico. Tell you what, Phil Fain did a great job of not giving up on the on the turnover that was committed by McIntosh. He hustled from the down low position he had on offense all the way to the other end of the floor and got the block, which created the the transition for the Redbirds. Redbirds, a couple of times now, two of their last three possessions have been lackadaisical, lazy passes that have been picked off. They've got to clean that up. McIntosh down the lane. Had it knocked out of his hands, got it back, and a kick out. It's Evans open for three. Good ball movement right there. I think the length and the size of New Mexico is certainly bothering the Redbirds when you talk about some of those passes, and there with McIntosh going down the lane, the Redbirds had to kind of reload the offense there, but they got an open three. One of the keys that I talked about early was that, that the, I thought the Redbirds needed to knock down some perimeter shots to draw that length of the Lobos away from that paint, paint area. It's Damian Jefferson knocking down the shot, a freshman player from not too far from here, East Chicago, Indiana. He's playing a couple hours away from home, and Keyshawn Evans from downtown. A couple of three-point makes in a row for the sophomore from Plantation, Florida. Contributions like that's going to earn him more minutes also. A guy who battled injuries all of last year really never got his footing as a freshman, but really making contributions off that Redbird bench. And another strong move from Jefferson. Wow, that was. That was quick. McIntosh needs to sit down on that and be ready. Now it's Hawkins from the corner, and the Redbirds have hit three, three balls in a row. It's going to be entertaining. McIntosh the steal as Jefferson kind of stumbled. Why not? Let's check it. This place was ready to erupt had that gone in. <laughs> the Redbirds with eight three-point makes in the game, Bob, have more three-point makes in a half than they've had in any game this season. First or an offensive rebound. That was good defense. They just got to secure the offside rebound. Second chance points right there for the Lobos. Good effort. Yeah, that's Dane Kuyper who flipped that one in. That was Hawkins. It didn't block out on the weak side rebound. It gave up second chance opportunity for the Lobos. Got to clean up the defense when it comes to rebound. Paris Lee lost the ball on the floor. But it's Deontay Hawkins who picked it up and scooped it in. Well, if you're going to lose it, lose it to a teammate. And he did, and Hawkins knew what to do with it. Right place, right time offense. Hawkins now with eight points to lead the Redbirds. A blocking foul against Mikhail McIntosh. That'll be his second. We've got a timeout on the floor. 5.41 to go here in a high-scoring opening half. Illinois State 33, New Mexico 29. You found your car on cars.com. I'm a robot. <laughs> Yeti. And found a place to service it, too. Now, when you're ready, you can sell your old car and find your new one, all on cars.com. You know us for shopping, and now we're there for every turn. Cars.com. Coming to the lunch meeting, Ned? I forgot the reports of the car. Oh, Kevin's lunch. That's the fifth time this week. Freaky fast. I forgot my lunch again. Jimmy Johns. Missouri Valley Conference basketball on Comcast Sportsnet brought to you by Casey's General Store. Casey's, famous for pizza. 5.41 to go here, opening half. Illinois State 33, 
New Mexico 29. The Lobos playing without their leading scorer, Tim Williams, a senior who's from suburban Chicago, from Flossmoor. He's in concussion protocol, didn't even make the team trip here to uh, Central Illinois. So the Lobos trying to win a game without a guy who scores 19 points a game. Well, the story in the game so far has been Illinois State 8 of 15 from three-point land at a 53% clip. That's rather impressive. The uh, Lobos in New Mexico, on the other hand, shooting 63% overall, 12 of 19 from the floor. They've been attacking the rim as they typically like to do. Long, athletic, and get after you. Jefferson makes both of his free throws and pulls New Mexico within a deuce. Hawkins spins, and he's going to get to the free throw line. I think if Hawkins got down on that block, I don't know that they could stop him down there. He's, he's got such a, a good little right-handed baby hook that goes over his left shoulder with such ease. I, I'd like to see him down there a little more often. I think they would struggle to defend that. He's the only player in the Missouri Valley right now that's in the top five in both scoring and rebounding. Healthy, confident, there's no doubt about it. He's playing his best basketball this stretch right now as, a, as an Illinois State Redbird. He is. There's, that's, that's well stated. He is playing his best ball. Real-time RPI has the Missouri Valley ranked as the 12th conference in America and the Mountain West is the 13th. You know, both of these leagues would certainly like to have better numbers than that. It's very early in the season, and you got to imagine by the end of the year they're, they're both going to be in the top 10, more than likely. Good basketball played in these two conferences. That there is. Hunter with a floater. That's no good. Logwood had it. Lost it, ball's on the floor, and it's going to be out of bounds to the Lobos. That's kind of a cluster. Nobody really had a control over anything there in that, in that scenario. Well, the shot clock moved down to 11, because obviously that ball never touched the rim. Now it's down to seven. Oh, First thing they're inside pass. for the jam. Great entry pass by Hunter. And, and a, now a steal. steal. And look, look who it was by. Brown in the corner. He missed the corner three, though. That was a bonus attempt just because of the steal. Clayton's open for three, and that's in. Boy, they're just begging the birds to take their shot. They're, Brown was a good five, six feet off of him. The ninth three-point make of the opening half for the Illinois State Redbirds. And another whistle against the Redbirds. Coach Muller arguing his point right there that if you're going to call that kind of foul on this end, he wants it called on that end when the Redbirds are on offense. I'm not saying I'm taking sides. I'm just pointing out what Coach Muller is having a discussion about right now with the officials. This is Jordan Hunter, a very good free throw shooter at the line. Hunter does a nice job playing with Brown and taking the ball handling responsibilities away from Brown so Brown can look for his shot. Yeah, really good complimentary player. Yes. Lee gets a screen from Hawkins, lost the dribble now. And Hawkins had it out of his hands and a steal. Back come New Mexico. Brown gets tangled up with Williams who makes a steal. Great job of defense by Williams. And now Paris Lee penetrates and missed the shot. Fain the offensive rebound, an opportunity for a three point play. Doing what he does best, following shots up, using his athleticism to get to the board. The Redbirds have a four-point lead, and Phil Fain to the free throw line when we come back. 3.49 to go here, opening half at Redbird Arena. 
for our halftime report presented by Country Financial. We'll have some first half statistics for you and the numbers right now are really good for both teams. And some highlights from a very entertaining opening 20 minutes of action. It's Illinois State 39 and New Mexico 35. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris with you and our Redbird production crew here at Redbird Arena in Normal. This game is part of the weekend competition between the Missouri Valley Conference and the Mountain West Conference. And it's Phil Fain to the free throw line. Illinois State sophomore trying to make it a three-point play. Obach Ajit has come back in the game, the seven-footer for New Mexico. Redbirds showing a zone, first time this evening. I think it kind of baffled the Lobos on what offense they wanted to get into there. That zone kind of puzzled them. A difficult pass made in traffic, but New Mexico's going to retain possession. That ball was tipped around and off of an Illinois State defender. There's five seconds to go on the shot clock. Not a very popular call within the arena at this very moment, but the only opinion that counts is the one in the stripes. Brown catch and shoot on the three, and then the offensive rebound, a foul against the Redbirds. It seems like Joe Firstinger's been in the middle of everything under the basket right now for New Mexico. He's had a nose for the ball and where the action's at. He's, he's been in the right place several times. You're right, Kurt. And with his length, if you're near the ball, you got a good chance of getting to it. Yeah, he's one of those energy guys, right place, right time, always around the basketball. He's from the same high school that produced Clay Thompson, one of the Splash Brothers from the Golden State Warriors. Redbirds are sending three fresh bodies in here. Deontay Hawkins, Tony Wills, and Keyshawn Evans all check in for the Redbirds. It's Williams, McIntosh, and Clayton that go to the Illinois State bench. Got to admit, I'm a little surprised with Wills entering the contest. Redbirds have the lead. Wills has two fouls, and there's just over three minutes remaining in the half. Firstinger with a 6.6 .6 rebound opening half. He's been active around the rim. Brown has gone a little bit silent here in the last five minutes. Hawkins, open three. Front of the rim, no good and cleared by Longwood. Sam Longwood is from uh, Indianapolis, so he's not too far from his old stomping grounds here playing in central Illinois. That's him with the basketball now. Entry pass goes to Ajet. He missed it, though. Once again, a good defensive rebound secured by Phil Fain. Redbirds with a three-guard offense here with Wills on the floor alongside Evans and Paris Lee. Six to shoot. This is going up. We approach the two minute mark left in this very entertaining opening half. Redbirds are staying with the three guards on the floor. They're staying in the zone. Brown puts it up, can't get it. Again, it's Fain. Had it in and out of his hands. Ball is on the floor. New Mexico comes away with it. Brown with a three right in front of the Redbird bench. A lot of people believe there was some contact when Phil Fain secured the first board. Lost it, which gave second chance opportunity to Brown, and he knew what to do with it immediately. And he's the first player in double figures with 12 points. Now Paris Lee tries to answer. Lobos have reclaimed the lead. Trying to add to it here. Boy, they do they do move the ball quickly. And Brown, they find him open, and he knocks down his second straight three. Timeout, Illinois State. And a six-point run by the Lobos has New Mexico in front, 43-39. Soon, as soon as I see, right. Elijah Brown has kind of disappeared. He proceeds to light us up. He heard you. He did. He took it personal, too. Wow. 
young man is good. They do move the ball very well on the perimeter. The Lobos have done a great job finding, finding the open man. Well, they've got, they, you know, they're very scrappy too. You know, they, they, they've come down and gotten a, several loose balls that the Redbirds haven't gotten on the floor after, and the Lobos have, and they come out of there with the loose balls and find the open, open shooter, and last two times it's been Brown. The Redbirds are shooting it at 48%, but right now the Lobos are shooting it at 56% here. And again, we told you at the top of the broadcast we could see some offense, and I think the first half has underscored that. Well, compliments to the Coach Neal and his staff for having developed a bench that, you know, we talked about that at the opening about how they played 10, 11 guys, and okay, they lose their leading score, and yet it's next man up, and they don't they don't falter one bit. They're playing well. Tony Wills for three. Wills is regaining a shooting touch that he had lost due to the hernia surgery early in the season. He's starting to get things back together. Looks more confident on the floor. Had only one three-point make leading into the last time. Uh, that's a great pass and a jam down low again. It's Firstinger. To complete my thought, Wills had only had one three-point make coming into last week's game. He made that one. Redbirds last game, and now he's got two three-point makes in a row. Redbirds are going to hold for the final shot here. And now a whistle. They're they have fouls to give, they being the Lobos. So instead of letting Paris Lee get into a, an offensive set, they went out, took the foul. And now it's Evans from the corner. His shot no good. Fain in and out of his hands. They got it back and flipped it up, but it's no good. And the half comes to a close with New Mexico leading 45-42. Catch your breath, folks. That was fun. Another 20 minutes of action still to come. But up next, it's our country insurance at the half. New Mexico 45, Illinois State 42. You're watching the Missouri Valley Mountain West Challenge on Comcast Sportsnet. 5-42, take a look at these halftime numbers. It's the first time all year that Illinois State has trailed at halftime. The Lobos with a big push at the end of the half to take this 45-42 lead. What jumps out on that stat page for you, Bob? Well, they don't even have it on there. What jumps out at me is Elijah Brown. What a performance he put on at the beginning and at the end of the half when a leader, a senior leader should. And, and he set the tempo and then he finished it off with an exclamation point with the two threes he knocked down near the end of the, the first half. He, he's three of three from free throws. He's two of four from, on three pointers and he's five of eight overall. He couldn't do any more for the Lobos to get them where they need to be. He's, for the, what, yeah, he's got 15 points in 13 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And for the Redbirds, the Redbirds, the thing that I'm impressed with is that they, they've got, they've played eight people, got quality minutes, which their bench has, has not shown this kind of strength up to this point throughout the season. And they're stepping up tonight and doing a good job. They, the Redbirds have 12 assists on 15 made baskets. That's outstanding. That's very impressive. Now, the thing I think the Redbirds have to be careful of, they are 10 of 20 from the three-point line, and that's good and bad. They've, that's a lot of three-point attempts in a half. That's a lot of three-point attempts in a game for most teams, but they don't want to fall in love with that. They've only taken 12 other shots from anywhere on the floor, so they've, they've got to kind of be careful to keep that inside-outside balance. New Mexico, 45, Illinois State, 42. Halftime here, brought to you by Country Financial. Back with more from Redbird Arena in just a moment. Firstinger, a shot fake, and now... 42, take a look at some of those first half highlights here. Both teams getting up and down as we thought they would in the first 20 minutes of action. That they did, and saw Phil Fain making contributions there. Nice little dump down there by uh, dish off by Ferris Lee, and a good three-pointer by him. And, and there's the man for the Lobos. Elijah Brown again, 15 points in 13 minutes of action. We talked about... 
the 12 assists for Illinois State in that opening half. Paris Lee has nine of them, so he had a whale of a first half, too. We've seen some outstanding performances in the first 20 minutes of action. And again, the Lobos are playing without their leading scorer, Tim Williams, who averages 19 points and seven rebounds a game, but is in concussion protocol. He didn't even make the trip here to normal, so they're doing all this without a really big cog in their machine. No question, but you, you know, you really got to tip your hat to them on how they're able to fill the void with him out. It, it's something that as they progress down the road into their conference, they're, they're going to be excited about guys they can bring off the bench, and it's not like they hesitate to do that anyway. The Redbirds sent Paris Lee, DJ Clayton, Phil Fain, Mikhail McIntosh, and Deontay Hawkins back on the floor. New Mexico counters with Jordan Hunter, Elijah Brown, Obach Ajet, Sam Logwood, and Joe Firstinger. So both teams send their starting fives back out to open the second half. 45-42 New Mexico as we begin the second half of action here. It's the Mountain West Missouri Valley Conference Challenge here in Normal, Illinois. Deontay Hawkins from the corner for the tie. His three ball is short and the long rebound to Brown. New Mexico is 3-0 in games this year in which they've led at halftime. And again, this is the first time the Redbirds have had a halftime deficit. Got a whistle against Phil Fain of Illinois State. I'm sorry, that's on DJ Clayton. That's his second. Dan Muller having a conversation with Brad Ferry, the official who made that call. Now, one of the keys to the game you brought up, Bob, was how long can Illinois State play with their starters staying out of foul trouble? And right now, D.J. Clayton has just picked up his third foul in the first minute of the second half. Odd Jeff from underneath, and he just flipped it in. And again, that's, that's, that's an excellent finish, but what a tremendous entry pass to find Ajent that low on the block. That's his first points of the night, the seven-footer. Clayton from the corner, his three is missed. Ball was ripped right out of the hands of Fain by Logwood of New Mexico. Logwood down the lane, hangs and fires, and it won't go. And it's McIntosh that clears. The Redbirds bring the ball up the floor quickly. Clayton down the lane. Spins, had a shot block. It was Firstinger, and it was off of Illinois State, not a bound. So it's going to be New Mexico basketball. Clayton happened to come over and have a seat because of what you stated. It's his third foul this early in the second half. That's going to hurt the Birds on both ends because he, Clayton is an offensive contributor, but a rebounder on both ends of the court. So it's Tony Wills who comes back in. He was the guy in foul trouble in the opening half for the Redbirds. Ajet again. Well, he's just having his way down there. They're getting him at the very low. I mean, he's posting way low. Birds aren't doing anything to move him off of the block defensively, and he's just having his way. Largest lead of the night for New Mexico, a seven-point advantage. Hawkins spins, shoots off the glass and in. There's that low block, little right-handed baby hook over his left shoulder. I still have yet seen anybody stop him with that move. He's got great touch on the low block from that angle. Brown has such great control of his game. Missed the shot, ball's on the floor, the Redbirds get it. Hawkins thought about the three, pump fake, stepped inside the arc, missed the shot, Brown clears. Dan Muller's chucked his coat, so he's going without his suit coat now, so you know things are serious on that Redbird bench. There's a nice dribble drive, but Jordan Hunter couldn't finish. decision by Hawkins. They were giving him that three-point shot right there again. But he didn't take it. You'll get that if you, if that's all you can get. You'll get it later. It's like Tony that. Wills taking it. So for the first time this year, Tony Wills has a, a night in which he's hit multiple threes. That's his second of the game.
Redbirds are within two now. Brown's going to try and answer with a three. Front of the rim, no good. Long rebound to Mikhail McIntosh. The Redbirds shoot for the tie or for the lead here. Hawkins picks up a foul on New Mexico's Ajet and the Redbird Arena faithful enjoy that call. Not that they're biased or anything. <laughs> That's what makes college basketball so much fun, I think, is you get, you get fan involvement. Yeah, nice loud crowd here tonight, and they should be. This is a very good matchup. And an entertaining kind oh, of game, too. It's getting their fast money's pace. Worth, yeah. McIntosh spins oh. and scores, and a three-point opportunity for the Missouri Valley Conference preseason pick for the first team. Good body control. We see it. Here he goes. Goes to the middle, comes back, gets a soft kiss off the glass. What great control that was. Good job. It's been a relatively quiet night for Mikhail McIntosh. Good to see him get back in the flow here early in the second half. He's got seven points now. Well, but look where he got the ball to get himself back into the flow. He got her inside in the middle of the paint, in the middle of the lane, and was able to do some damage. The Redbirds erased a seven-point deficit and now have the lead. Brown splits a double team and kicks it out to Kuiper. Kuiper with a beautiful shot fake, one dribble, easy little 15-footer. Madison Williams in the game now for Illinois State. That was him with the ball on the penetration. Paris Lee being the general of the court right now, directing traffic. Gets a screen from Fain, and then Fain cuts, and he gets the ball back and draws a foul on Elijah Brown. Great bounce pass right there from Williams. Timeout on the floor. 15.38 to go here in regulation. New Mexico leads Illinois State 51-50. You're watching the Valley and the Mountain West on ESPN3. Back here at Redbird Arena where New Mexico leads Illinois State 51-50. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris, our Redbird production crew with you. It's the Missouri Valley Mountain West Challenge. The original challenge between these two leagues started in 2009. It ran until 2012, had a three-year hiatus, resumed last year, and we're certainly glad it's back because this is a tremendous matchup here. Well, I think it's a great thing for um, non-conference scheduling. I think it just it, it benefits everybody. It's win-win all the way up and down the line, and I think you, you see matchups like this, I was uh, watching earlier today. I saw Colorado State, Wichita State. It just goes on and on and on. And, and not only within these two conferences, you've seen others on, on throughout the week, and it's, it's a great scenario, I think. And Fain makes both of his free throws to put the Redbirds back in front. Redbird took, Redbirds have taken the ball back inside. That has given them the, the opportunity to get back in this ball game and take the lead. Tony Wills just picked up his third foul. A whistle away from play. So DJ Clayton with three, and now Tony Wills with three for Illinois State. Redbirds cannot afford foul trouble. Well, the one thing that has been beneficial for the Birds tonight has been the, 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 uh, the play of their bench. They've gotten some quality minutes from Williams and Evans. Great pass. Boy, Brown somehow over the top of the defense found Xavier Williams, or I should say Xavier Adams, but he couldn't finish. Yeah, he, you got to either finish or draw the foul on that shot. Madison Williams, the three is missed, and Brown comes down with it. Coach Muller not overly pleased with that shot attempt. Fane drew some contact there, and the foul is going to go against New Mexico's Xavier Adams. Here's another look at that. Collision. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a hard foul. It was a hard bump, I should say. But it wasn't anything malicious. Young man's going after a loose ball. He just a half step late. Play on, let's go. Call the foul, move along, play play ball. Lobo's back into the two-three zone. They mix up defenses just sporadically, just to keep you off balance. Good job by Coach Neal and his staff. Williams drives and kicks out. 
Redbirds work the perimeter. That, that's not who the birds wanted shooting the ball in that scenario. They had McIntosh wide open in the corner. Ajit tried to tip in the Brown miss, but he couldn't finish either. Great, great effort by Phil Fain to keep it alive and not let Najik get the foot back. Tony Wills rimmed out. Redbirds got back in the game and got the lead by pounding the ball inside and going to the middle and all of a sudden they back in love with the three-point attempt. Each team one and done on these possessions where they're shooting from the perimeter and not getting a second opportunity. Seeing some heavy breathing taking place out there also. Well, there's four bodies at the scorer's table ready to check in, two from each team. Williams again can't get that thing to go. But I like what he did. He's attacking the paint, getting it into where an area where you, the shooting percentages usually go up. Boy, Brown's running the baseline. They've got a double low, or uh, two low posts down there, and he just running back for like the old days of Steve Alford in the Indiana offense. He just running that baseline wild. Kuiper the miss, but it's New Mexico getting the rebound, and it's Ajet, who's had a nice second half. He's got three field goals in this second half. The big fella from the South Sudan, from a family of 12. He's big, and he's from a huge family. <laughs> Great effort on his part, no question. The zone has slowed down the Redbirds and prevented them from getting the ball back in the middle very much. Evans for three, and that's in. And for the first time in his career, he's got multiple three-point makes tonight. In fact, he's got three. A nine-point night off the bench for Kishan Evans. He's given... Quality minutes, no question. Nice oh. pump fake by Kuiper. He's done it a couple of times here tonight. Old school basketball never goes out of style. Two, three dribbles, shot fake, defender flies by, you're wide open. In New Mexico, back up to 50% where they shoot it for the year. A great field goal percentage. It's McIntosh in traffic. Brown tries to split a screen and alertly kicked it out. How did he get that ball out? Kuiper's open from the corner, but we've got a whistle. And we've got, well, we're going to have a, probably, we might have a technical foul, but we had a whistle and a tangled up there. It looked like McIntosh and Brown. Yeah. Well, we'll sort this out as we step aside. 11.44 to go here. We're all even. It's 55, Illinois State, 55, New Mexico, here at Redbird Arena. Tonight's game here at Redbird Arena is brought to you by Casey's General Store. Casey's famous for pizza. 11.44 to go here. Illinois State and New Mexico locked into a 55-55 game. It was a double foul. And one of those fouls is against Illinois State's Tony Wills, and that's his fourth foul, so he's going to find himself on the Redbird bench. But it wasn't a technical. It looked, boy, it was getting close to a technical foul there. It looked like there was a little pushing and shoving, but instead it's a double foul. So New Mexico will maintain possession here, but again, the key transaction there is that Wills, Illinois State's top defender, has picked up his fourth foul, and he's on the bench. And Brown was the other recipient of the, on the, in that double foul, and that's only his second. Cooler heads prevailed as things got got going along there, and the officials did a good job of stepping in. And First thing they had the ball stripped right out of his hands. That was Hawkins that stripped it. That was a tremendous set of hands right there. And Dan Muller called him Illinois State's best post defender, and he has uh, had his work cut out for him tonight on the low block against this strong New Mexico team. McIntosh, fadeaway, no good. Offensive rebound, Hawkins. Evans is going to try another three. That is the front of the rim. The Redbirds again crashed the glass, but Fain couldn't come down with it. A couple of good looks right there for the Redbirds. Just couldn't cash in. 
Redbird still stuck in as they have the entire game, half court, man to man on defense. A little high low looking inside from first linger up top. Bad spacing right there. And the Redbirds are going to get it back because of Paris Lee. Stuck his hand in there and knocked it out of bounds off of a New Mexico player. Jefferson stuck in the corner with nowhere to go. Had another player, and I couldn't even see who it was. That they were right there. He turned to dribble and couldn't go anywhere. Next thing you know, Paris Lee creates a turnover. And a whistle before Lee could penetrate. And now a technical foul. It's going to go against the New Mexico bench, it appears. Wow. That kind of came out of nowhere. The action was all down at the opposite end of the floor. Coach Neal was standing in front of his bench. I really didn't. And he wasn't making any gestures. Well, evidently, he said whatever he said that got Brad Faree fired up, and he just teed him up. Oh, he did. That was quick. And so Pierce lead to the free throw line for the technical fouls. So he makes the free throws, and now the Redbirds will have possession of the basketball. Seven points, ten assists tonight for Paris Lee. That's a career high in assists. And he's coming off a terrific performance the other night against IUPUI. He's really had a nice start to the season. McIntosh drew some contact. A lot of whistles here in the second half. First thing picks up his second foul. And now the Redbirds are in the bonus as that's the seventh team foul against the Lobos. Well, the Redbirds are going back to what I discussed earlier. They're, they're attacking the paint area off the dribble and, and they're getting rewarded with the fouls from Lobos. Now, whether they continue to take advantage and knock down free throws remains to be seen. That's what they've got to do. McIntosh started the season like a house on fire. He had that 18-point game, then a 13-point game, then that 20-point effort at TCU. A little quieter the last two games with a 6-point effort and a 14-point effort. But he's had his hands really uh, tied here tonight, having to battle with these bigger New Mexico players. And he's got nine points after the made free throws. Well, I'm, I'm, and I'm glad to see that in the second half, he's, he's attempting to take the ball to the paint a little more often rather than settling for jump shots outside deep all the time. Jefferson drew contact, and he's going to get to the free throw line. And the freshman guard has been active for New Mexico. He's played well tonight. He's given him great minutes. He's running the show. You see here, right there, he uses his length. He's got that just enough length at his position that he typically is going to have a size advantage. And he's got a long length in his arms. He, he's going to be able to do some damage as they get into conference play. Nice looking freshman. His father, Everett, played at New Mexico, 1979 and 1980. One of the great nicknames, Highway, his dad's name, nickname. Highway. Highway Jefferson. Oh, there has to be a good story behind that one. And now the Lobos are going to show some pressure here. Some 2-2-1, two, two, the old UCLA, John Wooden, 2-2-1, two, two, he made it famous, and everybody, everybody tries to I guess they it. figured if it was good enough for John Wooden, it probably could be good enough for about every coach in the country, huh? Well said, yep. Under 10 minutes to go here now in this great ball game between Illinois State and New Mexico as part of the Missouri Valley Mountain West Challenge. Four on the shot clock, Evans shoots it over, a taller defender in first thinger, but he didn't get any of the rim, and so it's going to go back to New Mexico. No ball movement, no attacking that time. Give credit to the Lobo defense that kept the birds off balance and on the perimeter. The other thing, 
the 2-2-1 two, two, press shorten the shot clock. Once they got it past midcourt, they they used up just enough time that it really took them out of sync on, on offense. Near steal from Paris Lee, and now it's going to go back to Illinois State. As evidently, he knocked the ball off of Firstinger. Off of Firstinger's foot. He knocked it loose out of his hands and off his foot. We see a replay here. Brown coming baseline, dumps it down. Boom, right there we saw in replay. Good call officials. Lobo staying in the zone. Evans going to fire another three, his fourth three-point make of the night. That came after three to four passes, though. The defense had to shift two, three, four times. Next thing you know, he's standing wide open at the top of the key. That's a shot he likes. He's got 12 points. His career high was six coming into this basketball game. Great defense by Evans right then also. Jefferson again. Oh, my. Huge take right there. Good basket by Jefferson. In a crowd. Got it elevated up over top of people. Evans, he's got the hot hand. Why not? McIntosh. It's a scrum. On the floor, he and McDougal have their hands on it. It's going to be a held ball. It's going to go to the possession arrow in favor of Illinois State. Good job on both players' part. Getting down, getting after a loose ball. Fain is going to come back in for Illinois State. And Evans goes to the Redbird bench. Nice round of applause for the sophomore from Florida. Now, the one thing you have to wonder about the Lobos have used their bench extensively tonight. They've, they've logged out there probably 10, 11 players throughout the night. And the Birds have only gone eight deep in the second half here with Tony Will suffering with four fouls now. They're only down to seven, six, seven players. So it, it's, it, it's going to be interesting to see as this game wears on how that plays out. Jefferson, the key defensive rebound there for... New Mexico, and now it's a steal by Madison Williams. He just pried it away from Brown, and he went all the way down and laid it in. Wow. He just wanted that ball more. What a play by the freshman, Madison Williams. That got this crowd off their seats and roaring. Brown missed the three. He Out of bounds, Illinois State. The Redbirds have their largest lead of the game at five, and the Redbird Arena faithful. On their feet, a steal and a bucket for the freshman from Augusta, Georgia, Madison Williams. Illinois State 64, New Mexico 59. It's the Valley Mountain West Challenge on Comcast Sportsnet. Every road to St. Louis starts on a Missouri Valley Conference campus and converges under the gleaming reflection of Arch Madness. Don't miss the 2017 State Farm Missouri Valley Men's Basketball Championship March 2nd through the 5th at Scott Trade Center, presented by Fox Sports and um, Fox Sports Midwest and Aetna. For tickets, call 438-8000 or visit archmadness.com. Get your tickets and get on the road to Arch Madness. This game has a March feel to it here. Five-point Illinois State lead, 64-59. And a steal. It's Brown in the front court. Lazy pass right there. Just, it, 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 that's... Uncharacteristic of Paris Lee. McIntosh slipped, and that left the man open. McDougal's going to get the offensive glass. It's Brown. The ball was knocked to him, and now the Redbirds have it. And they have numbers. They numbers. Lita Williams, and a three-point opportunity for Madison Williams. Well, I talked about at the beginning the... As we see the replay of this great break here, spacing, give it up, make the defender commit, give it up, lay it in, draw the foul. I talked about the inexperience of the Illinois State bench. Tonight we've seen Keyshawn Evans come in and give him 17 minutes and 12 points during that 17 minutes. We've seen Madison Williams come in, get, get a huge steal, but in 14 minutes he gives him seven points, two assists, and three steals. 
great performance off from the bench tonight from the Redbirds. Early in the second half, New Mexico had a seven point lead. Now it's the Redbirds with the seven point advantage. Largest lead of the game. McDougal, nice move. Yes, it was. He Again, their, their guards are schooled well on where to make an entry pass. They throw it away from the defender and leads the low post player straight to the rim and, and they get it and know what to do with it. They're strong and well schooled. Lee's oh, that'll fade away. That's that's Paris Lee's shot. That he loves that little drive you hard, show the ball, and then fade away. Yep. He loves that little move. Good defense by Hawkins as the Lobos once again tried to get McDougal on the low block. Hawkins looking a little fatigued he's, out there to he's me. He's winded, no doubt about it. And I think the Redford bench sees it too because he's going to take a spot on that bench and Clayton's going to come in. Yeah, the big fella, 6'8", 220 pounder, is a little winded for the Redbirds. Hunter and Brown, I think, are the keys down the stretch here in the last six minutes for the Lobos. Hunter the miss. Offensive wow. rebound again, Jefferson, in the middle of everything here in the second half. Boy, he has come to life. You are so true, Kirk. That, that was a man's rebound right there in a crowd and to put it back. He's got 10 points, and that's a new career high. Now it's Paris Lee for three. Top of the key. Hunter did not step up on him. Harris knew what to do with it. Lee, three out of six from three-point land tonight. Give him 13 points. The Redbirds have 14 three-point makes here tonight. Brown had it stolen away. His pass was picked off by Lee. Great decision right there by Paris Lee. Did not have numbers, no advantage. Run some half-court offense and get the ball in the hands of the people your coach wants it in. And at the five-minute mark, the Redbirds have the basketball and an eight-point lead. Brown, his three. Oh, my. Halfway down and came out. McDougal, the offensive board, he couldn't get it. First Inger is blocked from behind, and that's going to be a free-throw opportunity. How did Brown's shot not go in? That, it was... Like you said, halfway down. Boy, the intensity out here. This, this is what non-conference challenge games are all about. This is what coaches love to see. Put your team in these positions. Get them ready for conference play. Joe Firstinger has, as we mentioned, been... It seemed like in the middle of everything in the first half, a little bit quieter here in the second half, but a big offensive rebound and an opportunity here for him to give his team two more points from the free throw line. This team scores points at the foul line. Boy, in close ball games, free throws become so vital. You gotta knock them down, down the stretch. Lobos are 13 of 16 from the stripe here tonight. Hawkins is back in the game, that's him. He's trying to slip the ball to Fain, and it's gonna go out of bounds to New Mexico. Again, right there I think, Deontay Hawkins had the right idea, shot fake, take it off the penetrate, but that's not what he's very good at. He needs to take one or two steps and either kick it or shoot it. He's not a playmaker. Jefferson. Had it stripped and a foul. Oh, goodness. Collision there with McIntosh, some contact, and Jefferson to the free throw line. I think Mr. Hunter got away with a push off right there. Stand corrected, no free throws there. It's going to be an inbounds play here. Said it, the action happened before the shot. And the Redbirds come away with a steal on the inbounds and then a foul 
by a frustrated Damian Jefferson. Made a freshman mistake right there on trying to inbounds the ball without any fake or anything, and just trying to throw it over top of somebody. And as a freshman, he, for, he forgets sometimes what kind of an athlete you're playing against. So it'll be Deontay Hawkins to the free throw line. Dan Muller trying to get his troops to get a big, big victory here in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Redbirds 9 of 15 from the foul line here tonight. That's not helping the cause when you shoot free throws at that pace. Ten of 16 as Deontay splits the free throws and that Redbird lead is eight as we approach the four minute mark left in this one. A little high-low action right there. That's where they missed Tim Williams the most. Hunter had an open three but missed the shot. New Mexico ran the offense but couldn't cash in on the three ball. Redbirds can afford to run a little clock here. Well, there's two schools of thoughts on that. When do you start running clock? Sometimes you run it, you run it too soon, you take yourself out of your offense. And there's that little baby hook again from Hawkins. Big strong move. Hawkins with 14. That spread makes it 10. That's that's a mental boost for the Redbird player. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 3.26 to go. The Redbirds have their largest lead of the game at 10 here at Redbird Arena. From Augusta, Georgia with a key play that's helped put the Redbirds in front here by 10. Our defensive play of the game brought to you by Bratcher Heating and Air. Bratcher, mating home comfortable again. Learn more on ways to defend your home against the elements by visiting BratcherComfort.com. That was a huge defensive play for the Redbirds. Oh, that was one of the biggest momentum plays in the second half, I think, because it wasn't just a steal. It was a steal from Elijah Brown, the, the star player for the Lobos. And when, when you can do something to negate his abilities, you've really risen to the occasion. And for, a fr for the freshman Madison Williams to do that, that was, that was a big play. And what a night for Williams, a career-high seven points. His previous career-high was four. He's really given a big contribution to Illinois State off that Redbird bench. You kind of figured that this was going to go to... To Brown and a miss. After the timeout. You kind of figured that he was going to get the shot. You know, you mentioned earlier that the young man, Elijah Brown, he's, he's the son of the, the former NBA coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Lakers and so forth, Mike Brown. And so he's grown up. Basketball is, is, is all he basically has grown up around and knows and understands. He's a quality young man, good, good kid. Clayton, Fain, three on the clock. Hook shot missed and cleared out of there by the big fella, Ajet. Well, the Birds did not get a score out of that possession, but they did a lot of good things with ball movement, Good shot in the middle of the lane. Logwood is going to get to the free throw line. He bumped with McIntosh. And a blocking foul on McIntosh. And a timeout on the floor. 2.30 left in this one. Illinois State 74, New Mexico 64 here on Comcast Sportsnet. Today's Meyer player of the game off that Redbird bench, Keyshawn Evans, the freshman from Florida with 12 points thanks to four big three-pointers. Time and time again, he had that shot going down. A big player for the Redbirds tonight, and he is our Meyer player of the game. Brought to you by Meyer. You're just minutes away from saving with M Perks. Find out more at Meyer.com. It's a night that that young man won't soon forget. Well, and hopefully he can build some trust and confidence within himself, and the staff can build some trust and confidence in his minutes, and he's going to see these minutes expand, and he and Madison Williams both as the season continues. 
Well, I can't say enough about what Coach Neal and the Lobo staff has done with, with making this game exciting all the way because of the loss of Tim Williams. You take 19 points out of your starting lineup and off your team and, and throw somebody else in there, you, it's, it's incredible. They run a lot of high-low action, and he's the one down low at 6'8", 240. You take that out of the middle of your offense, and that, that just really hurts you desperately. So I give a lot of credit to the to the Lobo staff and the, and the players that have replaced Tim Williams on how they've continued to fight and make this a good ball game. Well, I got to imagine that Dan Muller's going to address free throw shooting with his Redbirds here tonight as Paris Lee splits them both. Redbirds are now 11 of 17, 11 of 18 now from the free throw line. And that lead is 75-66, under two and a half to go. Logwood works on McIntosh. Brown for three with Wills coming at him. And Tony Wills just picked up his fifth foul of the game. So Wills is disqualified now. He'll go to the Redbird bench and DJ Clayton's gonna come in. 6 points on the night for Tony Wills. And the first time this year that he's fouled out of a game. 3 free throws now coming for Elijah Brown. He's sitting right at his season average of 15 points. This guy had a 41 point game last year against Fresno State. Oh by the way, he also had 11 rebounds in the game and a 33 point game against San Jose State off the bench. He can fill it up. You can tell by the way he plays, he understands the game. He's looking for teammates. He's looking for angles to attack the rim. He knows how to draw fouls and get to the free throw line. He has, a, 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 you know, an extraordinary knowledge of the game. Makes all three, give him 18 points, and he pulls his team within six. Those were huge free throws right there. Eight to shoot. Five to shoot. McIntosh, fade away, in and out. Hunter. Stutter step, flipped it up and in. Mr. Hunter making his presence known late in the game. Him and Brown. We got us a ball game, folks. Lobos do not fade away. They keep attacking and get stops. Redbirds have gone into this delay game on offense, and it seems to have kind of taken away some of their, their attack up from their continuity. Hawkins for three, in and out. Fain tipped it, but it's gonna to go to New Mexico. The Lobos are on a 7-1 run right now and are within four. And at the 107 mark, Craig Neal calls timeout. A 30 second timeout. The two losses that ISU have experienced this year, both have been on the road, but they've had late game leads and they've let them dwindle away and have lost them. Tonight, you better believe that's something that during this timeout is being discussed. Who's going to step up? Who's going to get a stop and have a rebound on defense? And who's going to step up on offense? Protect the ball. Go strong to the rim. Don't settle for all jump shots outside. Things of those natures are going to be discussed right now. The Redbirds had a 10-point lead at the 341 mark. And now it's down to four with New Mexico having possession of the basketball with 67 seconds remaining. What a basketball game we've seen here tonight. I watched one this afternoon, UCLA, Kentucky. UCLA had an 11-point lead with a minute and a half, and with 18 seconds, it was, it was a two-point game. It happens everywhere. Brown for three. That's it. Holy smokes, what a big-time player. 
he was faced right there on defense also. He has scored six of his team's last eight points, pulled the Lobos to within one. Eight to shoot, Lee hangs, fires and scores. And Paris Lee with maybe his biggest basket of the night. That's, that's what seniors do for you right there. He waited till he got the angle and drew it right there, found the gap and didn't go too far. A year ago, he took that extra dribble and got in trouble. Right there, he pulled up, hit the little floater. Big time play. A year ago, that shot is either Mikhail McIntosh's, Deontay Hawkins, Yep. Or, the, or the guy who graduated who's not with this team any longer, Devon Akun Purcell. Yep. But tonight, it's a senior from Maywood, Illinois, saying it's my turn to take a shot, and Paris Lee takes the shot. He's got 16 points. It's a three-point game, a one-possession game, and you just know that Elijah Brown's going to have his hand oh. in the basketball here. Yeah, and, and now you play that guessing game. Okay, is it too early? When he gets it, do you foul him to take away the three-point shot? Do you trust your defense, et cetera, et cetera? You got all kinds of scenarios playing out. 31.8, you know, 32 seconds in essence is, is an eternity in a game of basketball. Redbirds have two timeouts left. Lobos have one. Hunter on the baseline. Out and he stepped bounds. on the baseline, and that's Paris Lee's defense again. Senior leadership, it's, an, it's just, you can't, can't say enough about it. Paris Lee, he distributes the ball, he creates on offense, and he leads on defense. And Keyshawn Evans has checked in the game now in favor of Williams back to the Redbird bench. It'll be Deontay Hawkins to trigger, full court pressure by the Lobos. And it's Lee who gets it and is immediately fouled right in front of the New Mexico bench. This is exactly what you would anticipate them to do. No time running off the clock, basically. And Jordan Hunter just picked up his fifth foul. Hunter makes one of, makes, or excuse me, Lee makes this first free throw, it's a two possession game. Clutch free throws for Paris Lee. 20 seconds left. Here's Brown. Well, he's going to shoot. We all know that. The Redbirds drive him way out. Fame did a good job of double teaming on him. Jefferson's three is no good. And McHat uh, Mikhail McIntosh has it. The Redbirds are going to win this game. Harris comes away with a steal. And it's going to be a Brown three to end it. Illinois State 79, New Mexico 74. What a ball game. And it was fun and entertaining, just like we predicted from the beginning. Paris Lee with basket after basket and free throw after free throw down the stretch with 18 points to lead the Redbirds. It was a 21-point night for Elijah Brown for New Mexico. The Redbirds in the Missouri Valley Conference beat the Mountain West, New Mexico Lobos. Boy, fans, this was a great basketball game, huh? Fun to watch. No, I'm, you know, I'm just glad you and I got to be here courtside to watch it. This is fun stuff. This was a great effort by both squads. Again, you can't say enough about the effort by the Lobos from New Mexico. Missing their leading score, Tim Williams, coming back to his home state. It's just a shame he wasn't able to be here tonight. And then yet they put up a brave fight. But you also got to take and give credit to the Redbirds. What a, what a finish to this game. You better believe they had thoughts about the games they've given away down the stretch at Murray State and at TCU. And yet tonight, it didn't happen that way. 
Paris Lee was not going to allow that. He hit big free throws, he created turnovers, and he made a great shot. Illinois State 79 and New Mexico 74. So for our producer, Autumn Conley and our Redbird Productions crew, I'm Kurt Pegler alongside Bob Morris saying so long from Redbird Arena in Normal where the final score again, Illinois State 79 and New Mexico 74. The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Comcast Sportsnet by Illinois State University. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Comcast Sportsnet and Illinois State University is strictly prohibited. 79-74 Redbirds and good night from Redbird Arena.